With regard to the film industry, I think uh, one of the greatest success stories of India's soft power has been India's film industry, whether uh, it is Bollywood or it is regional cinema, Tamil, Telugu, uh, Bengali, and uh, for the lack of uh, time, I would not go across the various other Indian languages which have uh, added to the diversity of uh, India's uh, soft power initiative as it has unfolded over the last hundred years. And uh, the beauty is that the Indian film industry has grown not because of the government, but it has grown despite the government. And that is why, uh, in order to see that this receives a further fillip, uh, we have been uh, working to ensure that uh, there is a single window clearance insofar as uh, shootings are concerned, especially uh, for uh, people who want to really come in from abroad and use Indian locales for shooting. That uh, clearance time between central government and state governments uh, can be cut down. Similarly, there have been issues which have come up uh, with regard to the entire certification process. Uh, though uh, entry 60 of the union list gives this power entirely to the union government uh, to certify films as being fit or unfit uh, for public viewing, uh, state governments have been exercising you know, a certain law and order remit or powers which they feel flow out of entry 33 of uh, the state list. Uh, therefore, in order to reconcile and harmonize uh, this entire gamut, we've set up a committee under the former Chief Justice, uh, Mr. Mukul Mudgul, uh, to see that uh, the uh, integrity and robustness of the Central Board of Film Certification processes is protected, and film producers do not really have to go hat in hand from secretariat to secretariat, ensuring that their films are screened in a particular state, even after they have been certified by the Central Board of Film Certification. I do hope uh, that this committee uh, would be able to uh, send its report as early as possible uh, so that we can translate it into an appropriate legal framework, and if it requires to be taken to Parliament, we can expeditiously take it uh, in the next session itself. Uday in his speech had specifically referred to uh, two issues, uh, one with regard to uh, increased customs duty on set-top boxes, and I believe the other issue was with regard to withholding of, content, uh, of uh, taxation on content rights, if I've got the order correct. Insofar as the first part of it is concerned, I think uh, digitization has been a unique experiment uh, which uh, my honorable predecessor uh, took upon uh, as a legal remit in order to see that uh, the uh, cable and television space, uh, which is analog across more than 51% uh, of television homes in this country, uh, is digitized. Uh, in the first phase, we went through a digitization process in uh, Mumbai, in Calcutta, in Delhi, and in Chennai. Uh, by and large, this digitization process has been successful. But what has also come out uh, as a result of a review of this process is that most of these set-top boxes you know, are imported from countries in our neighborhood, especially Southeast Asia. So it is important that uh, when uh, such a huge exercise is undertaken, uh, which uh, involves uh, a revenue outgo of about four to five billion dollars, essentially paid by the, uh, by the people of India and by the multi-system operators, uh, there should be certain tangible benefits which must accrue to Indian manufacturing. So therefore, in order to give a fillip to Indian manufacturing, to see that uh, a part of this uh, huge economic cake in the broadcasting sector uh, does translate into tangibles, in terms of uh, providing the appropriate incentives to the Indian manufacturing sector, the finance minister, in his wisdom, uh, decided that customs duties on imported set-top boxes uh, needs to be uh, increased slightly. So therefore, I don't think it should really be seen as an attempt uh, in order to stall digitization or in order to um, set the process of digitization back. It needs to be seen in its proper perspective that uh, we as a country do also have a responsibility of ensuring a certain amount of vibrance in our manufacturing sector as we implement 
various initiatives to try and see that some of our <coughs> sectors are made far more transparent and are made uh, you know far more uh, economically uh, robust as we go into the second phase of uh, digitization uh, across 38 cities i think it is very important for the industry also to realize uh, that while there may be a legal compact which uh, backs this entire process there is also a social contract which uh, calls upon all stakeholders to this process whether they are broadcasters multi system operators or the local cable operators to intersee sort out the issues which they have because eventually uh, this uh, process needs to be a win win situation from everyone to the broadcaster to the consumer and if any section <coughs> within this uh, larger stakeholder family uh, really feels short changed then obviously uh, there is cause of concern and that is where the industry really needs to walk that extra mile in order to ensure that as we unfold uh, the process through its second third and fourth phase uh, it uh, really is a process which enjoys the universal backing of all stakeholders irrespective of wherever in the value chain uh, do they fit in